All right, guys, we're out here at the Evans County Wildlife uh, Rattlesnake Round Roundup and Classic, and uh, we're going to sit down today and talk to uh, Mr. Ronnie Davis. He hunts a dog called uh, Deadbeat, and it's owned by Trip Duke. Is yes. that correct? And uh, what is uh, what year model is uh, Beat? Oh, uh, he's a three year old. So twenty twenty. Gotcha. So um, we went hunting. You may have seen the video. We went hunting with uh, Beat last night on the cast, and he ended up getting lucky and squeezing into the finals. I don't think we expected a circle cast to come in last night. I know you, uh, from the minute you won, you're like, man, you were sweating it. That'll be hard to get in with that school. Yeah, but uh, you got it done, and uh, I didn't know it. And then we were talking at the club, but come to find out this dog won the first one of the first 100K hunts. And was it an Illinois? Like a Moody. The Michael Moody hunt, and that was the first one they did when yes. they had the two, correct? Yes. Sir. And um, so you kind of told me, but uh, Beat has a lifetime earnings in PKC of ninety one thousand three hundred sixty eight dollars. He's a UKC night champion, and uh, he's got thirty four thousand three hundred thirty three in pro sport. So um, just give me. You're telling someone you never met about Beat. Let's who? What is Beat, and how long have you had Beat? And you know what is. What do you like about beat? Well, I got beat back in June of last year, and he's a deadly accurate dog. Low end strike dog, move real good. Dick Coons, he's dangerous. I had him in five UKC hunts, won all five of them. That's Made tough. him night champion. Don't know what he was in before I got him. But right. that's what I had him in, qualifying for the tournament of the champions. Got in at the 100K with him. Did a little winning here and there with him, but nothing else real spectacular. So you've had him just shy of a year right now? Yeah, just shy of a year. Got gotcha. you. And um, uh, so Trip owns him, Trip Duke. Um, yes. Is Trip like, how do you know Trip? How did that relationship come about and, and that? We grew up as friends. Uh, I met him late through high school year, and coon hunted with him. Real good fellow. Good, good deal. And uh, is he ex happy with his purchase of beat so far? I am. <laughs> I'm probably more happy than he is. <laughs> um, so you've been hunting less than a year, and uh, so what is something that, if you had to pick, that's my most favorite quality that beat has. What is it that you know you can just count on him doing all the time, and it's just one of your favorite things about him? He's got a coon when he loads up. <laughs> I mean, I, I go to a tree and don't find a coon. That's whenever I ain't doing my job because I believe he's got them every time he trees. Right. Now he's a dog. And he makes mistakes. I walk through slicks with him from being to trees without coons, but ninety percent of them's got coons in them. That's that's what it takes to win these. These hunts definitely. Um, so you mentioned earlier that he's a low end strike dog. So what was you thinking last night when you got second and almost first strike? Man, I was just so surprised. I don't know where this trailing come from, but I like it a lot. I mean, hey, if it works, it works. I wish he'd trail a little more. Right. He getting the job done when he's trailing. So if some ain't broke, don't fix. Right. So um, before we get deeper in this, where what is beat out of? Uh, what's his bloodline look like? Uh, I can't really remember his mama's side, but he's out of Fred Bear on his on um, daddy's side. It's a big old dog, I know. Mm. Big old houndy looking dog. So if you had to, if you could fix anything about beat, or if it, there might not be, what would be the one thing you'd change or tweak if you could had that power? Or is there anything that you see as a downfall? One of the things I'd change about him, I wish he wouldn't go so deep every time. I mean, he's got a mouth that you can hear miles away, but he's going to be sunk through the country with a coon somewhere. He just wants to be by himself. Don't want no other dogs around him. So uh, he's, he's, a, he's a dead loner then, is what you're saying? Yes, sir. But if, I mean, if there's a hot coon out the truck, he's going to get part of it. But if they don't strike right outside the truck, you can make him being somewhere by himself. He's sneaking off. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you said you hunted in Junction at the Michael Moody $100,000 hunt. Um, 
when you first saw that hunt, what was your initial impression of that hunt and the implications that it had on this sport? I knew I had a dog to treat coons and could compete because other folks is doing one at a bigger level with him. So I knew I had a dog to compete. But man, I was nervous. It was a big hunt for me. And all I knew is just to strike and treat my dog. When my dog barked, I struck him. Whenever he loaded up, I treat him. I let everything else just go in place. And I made a mistake, and he made a mistake doing the cast, but everything just went as it's supposed to. That's good. So you're entering at the hunt first night, not even went to the woods. Do you think, or I guess we all hope, but do you think, legitimately I'm going to be in that final did you ever picture getting to that point as the final maybe maybe not I had a bad night the night before the 100,000 so and, and me as a coon hunter if I got a bad night before I know the dog I don't have to bag the bag right so I was kind of looking to get a good score on that first night going out and what was your score? Do you do you remember what the score was? Mm, Been a while. Maybe two seventy five. I know I treat. I got a hundred pump on the first, and then got a hundred and got seventy five, seventy five plus, and then twenty five and a hundred. It's two hundred plus. So, um, the cast that got you to the finals. Do you remember that cast? Does anything in that cast stick out? What was when the timer or the stopwatch went off, what what was rushing through your head right right then? And it was just make it back to the clubhouse on time. We was fighting for a deadline. We was a good ways away from the clubhouse, oh. but I knew if I could get back to my truck, I could make it. But if the truck could hold up, I was gonna make it. Did you make it within with just minutes or? It was about ten minutes before deadline. That's all it takes. So. Um, what goes in the process of the pro or your thought process of splitting? You know what? What came that determination? What did that conversation sound like between you four guys? Well, basically, whenever oh, I was headed back to the clubhouse, I was hoping that they split because during that cast that led up to it on the way back, we had to call a timeout and I had to go get him. But whenever I went over in there and got him, he was in a yellow jacket nest. And he was just covered in uh, wild bees. Yeah. He was just covered in bees, and me and him both got ate up. And when I made it back to the clubhouse, he done threw up all in my box and everything. Well, I didn't really want to say nothing, but I was hoping that everybody did want to split. And before I made it back, everybody was already wanting to split, so I I was just head over heels for it. Who was, um, who was the other three? Do you remember that was in it with you? Oh, Ryan Crossman was Spice Girl. Yeah. Sean Burke and Screamer That's and right. Clifford Rivers with Battle Axe. If I remember correctly, y'all split and the, the the Mississippi one, they did hunt it off. Is that correct? Yes, I think Thunder and Lightning won it. Yes, sir. Okay. So did you participate in this past year's Michael Moody? No, sir. Didn't get an entry? No, sir. So out of, the, out of all this money won, he's won 91K plus in PKC, 35 almost in pro sport. You know, that's almost 120 125,000 how much of that have you guys as a team put on them since June I probably put about 50 on him in PKC maybe 500 in pro sport if that I really ain't won nothing in um, pro sport so the pro sport winnings became prior to y'all yeah uh Dustin we got 33,000 with him um when he had him and Adam McGuire put most of the winnings on in PKC. Gotcha. Is there anything that you, one more question I had is, what is your goals for the year would be, you know, what are y'all looking forward to? What hunts do you have coming up with them off on the horizon right now? We got uh, the World Hunt, Super States, National, and Turning the Champions is the. So y'all about to have a busy, busy spring. Busy in the shy of like two months. Awesome. We'll be on the road. Um, is there anyone that you want to give a shout out or you want to say or anything you want to say before we wrap this up uh, to anyone out there? 
Yeah, I want to just thank Trip Duke for just giving me the opportunity to be able to push a dog like this and just sticking his neck out and giving me a chance. I mean, he knew what the dog was. I ain't never won nothing big, just little local hunts, and he gave me a chance to hunt at a bigger level. I want to thank Clifford Rivers, Dennis Bird, all of them, Michael Mass, and all of them just helping me out, do whatever I want. I mean, they support me for whatever I do. I got a big fan base around the house. Uh, my buddies, all, they all want to hang out. They know if it comes to these coon dogs, I got to hunt. I'm going to be in the woods. If you want to hang out, come talk to me in the woods. That's where I'm going to be. There you go. Well, thanks for sitting down with us, and thanks for being our first guest. And I know it was probably a little bit rocky around the edges, but I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a good spring, and hopefully we see you in the winter circle. Oh, yeah. So, I hope to see you, Thank too. Thank you, Ronnie. Appreciate you Yes, sir. Good luck tonight. Oh, yeah.